What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleanX.com. So today I'm gonna to show you the right way to do a bench dip so that you don't shred up your shoulder in the process. I call the normal bench dip the rotator cuff ripper dip. And there's a reason why. We actually put it in our exercise fails video. There's a reason why that video is funny because we've all recognized it, unfortunately, all too often. And people do this version of the dip way too often. This is the bad version. A lot of people might say, but Jeff, it looks normal. And that's the problem, this. Now do you know what I'm doing wrong? Do you know what the problem is with this dip? You should be focusing right in on that shoulder and the problem is the position of this shoulder in relation to my trunk. It's way forward. You see how it's jutting here forward? And also what's happening is we're allowing it to collapse. We're allowing our shoulders to hike up and just collapse on our neck and then we crank out our dips from here. Well what all that's doing is it's really screwing up your shoulder because it's taking all the the uh, structures inside that shoulder joint and compressing them as we push weight through our arm. If you look at Raymond over here, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. So this is the ball and socket. It sits in this position here. You put your arm back behind your body. As soon as you put force through your hand, you're pushing up into this joint so you have some compression. But when you allow your shoulders to then jut forward like this, you're pushing forward and up you're creating a lot less room for all the structures that run through this little space up here. You have your supraspinatus tendon, your rotator cuff, you have your bursa. All this stuff gets inflamed and jammed up against that space, which then you start grinding up and down, up and down, up and down. You're creating a lot of uh, repetitive stress to that joint. That's not good. So if you're gonna do the exercise the right way, you gotta figure out a way to take that strain away. And the first thing you have to do is you have to externally rotate the shoulder. Because internal rotation is gonna pull the shoulder forward. External rotation is gonna pull the shoulder back. So the position of your hands is extremely helpful. If I do this, which is what most people do, they take their thumbs and they put them in this way, right next to their body, I'm internally rotating. I'm almost giving myself no chance to do the exercise properly. If I take my hands and I turn them out, now we're externally rotating. You can see the position of the shoulder as I turn out. It goes back. That's the first thing. The second thing is, I mentioned to you before, allowing your shoulders to collapse on your body and on your neck. You don't want that. If it collapses, you can see that also throws your shoulder forward. So you want to do is you want to keep your shoulders down and back. So if you look from behind here, the difference is when I get ready to dip, if I'm collapsed here and I'm cranking out my reps like that, or if I set them down and back here, and now I'm cranking out my reps, you can see the difference that the shoulders stay down as the elbows bend. Now it takes a lot more force and contraction in the triceps to do this because now all the work's being done on the triceps, but that's what you want in the first place. So when we're here, you can see the shoulder stays in a much better position. It's not getting into this position here. Okay, so your biggest two keys are positions of your hands and then the, the stability here through your shoulders to keep them down and back, depressed, as opposed to letting them ride up. If you do that and you crank out your dips, you get a lot more uh, of what you're looking for and a lot less of what you're not looking for. Guys, again, I've always said that exercises themselves, it's not just whether you're doing them, it's whether you're doing them right. And if you're looking to be in this game for the long term, meaning being able to lift without injury, you gotta make sure you get these things right. Because if you were doing this, you had no idea, you might just wake up feeling worse and worse and worse progressively over the course of many, many workouts and say, I don't know what happened. Y you didn't do one thing wrong, you did one thing wrong repetitively and it snuck up on you. I don't wanna see that happen to you. If you wanna train smart, if you wanna train like an athlete, if you wanna train the right way, head to athletenext.com, get one of our Athletenext training programs. I put a link below to our program selector that will allow you to pick the program that's best suited to your specific goals, but all, all unified by the fact that I'm gonna make sure as a physical therapist to train you safely to help you get to where you wanna be the right way. Those are over at athletenext.com. If you found the video helpful, leave your comments and thumbs up below. And if you want me to cover what was wrong with all those other exercise fails we did in that video, let me know, I'll do that too in uh, the coming videos. All right guys, see you soon.